Gonna be honest, one of the best bites of steak I've had. Holy f Holy it shape. Denver steak, where have you been all my life? If I was to introduce you to a new steak that was only found in 2008, you'd be like, Sam, what the f This, ladies and gentlemen, is a Denver steak. And by the way, not named after the city of Denver. In fact, it has nothing to do with Denver. It was discovered in 2008 which is crazy when you think about it. We've known about the tenderloin, the ribeye, the, the chuck, the, the flat iron. Mm, flat iron's still a little bit newish too. But all these cuts, we've known about for a long time. There was a program by the National Cattlemen's Beef Association that put out a, 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 a quest to find new cuts of steak. And this was discovered, I think, in Nebraska or something. Listen, this cut comes from the shoulder of the cow, generally where you would find the chuck. And the chuck, you may or may not know, is a rather tough cut of meat because it's on one of the parts of the animal that moves a lot. And if it moves a lot and it gets exercised a lot, it's a tougher cut. The tenderloin is, is a safe underneath a bunch of bone and other meat. It doesn't get movement. It's very tender. This guy is in the chuck family, in that chuck primal cut, but protected above by all kinds of other stuff that you would cook low and slow or a pressure cooker or a braise with liquid to get it tender. But not this guy. This guy we're gonna cook hot and fast on the grill behind me. And then, even though it's about the steak, we're gonna turn it into a fantastic salad with a caramelized onion vinaigrette. Damn it, it's gonna be good. And ready for this? Grilled garlic butter croutons. Grilled, I said. Yes, I said that. You're learning shit all over the place today from the most unlikely person to learn from. Dopey guy that looks like me. So let's not waste any time. We season simply, we head to the grill. Look at it, I want you to look at something. Look at the marbling in this. By the way, I didn't mention it. This is a Wagyu Denver steak. Wagyu Denver steak. And it's absolutely gorgeous. These little extra bits of fat, yes, I'm leaving them on. But pay certain attention to the way the grain goes. We always talk about you have to cut against the grain, you have to cut against the grain. Well, take a look, because the grain in this steak runs this way. The natural inclination, I think, would be to cut it like this, boom, boom, boom. That would be a mistake. It's still gonna be good, but by shortening up those fibers, by cutting against the grain, you end up with a much more tender piece of meat. So because they run this way, when we go to cut it for the salad, I'm probably gonna cut it like this, in thirds. Cut it in a third here, turn it, and then cut that way. Because you don't want to slice that long, that'd be ridiculous. Who are we, King Henry VIII? Now we season. All we're gonna do is this. We're gonna just paint it with just a little bit of oil. Much respect to this little steak. And yeah, there's a lot of fat, but I just wanna just give it a little bit of oil to help the seasoning stick. And the seasoning will be nothing but our BFF, our salt, pepper, granulated garlic, not garlic salt, there's already salt in this. And by the way, if you're making your own, which you should be buying ours, that's fine at shopstcg.com. But if you're making your own, don't make the mistake of putting garlic salt in and salt, salt, because that's gonna be too much salt. But this can handle quite a lot because it's very thick. Pull it around, as Gordon Ramsay would say, mop up the rest of the spices, the seasonings, don't let anything go to waste. And he doesn't sound like that, but all right. This goes to the grill with me and we start cooking. And with the grill nice and warm, probably medium high, and our steak seasoned beautifully, on we go. We're looking for 130 degrees, and here's how we're gonna get there. We're gonna turn it a lot, like, oh, I don't know, every minute and a half or so. And because it's almost square, I'm gonna cook it like that. Minute and a half or so, turn, 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 till we get there. It's gonna be great. I talk about the, the, the benefits of befriending a butcher. Know a good butcher, you'll get the steaks that you want, you'll get good cuts and stuff like that. I go to a local butcher here in San Diego, it's great, I love them, called Cecil's. They don't carry the Denver steak, but my friend Kevin Green in Pensacola, Florida at the butcher shop does. Do you remember those giant turkey legs we did a couple of years ago? Couldn't get them here, got them from him. Kevin, thank you. I'm gonna make you proud, buddy. All right, this is cooking. We have two other things to do at the same time. I hope it's not too much for everybody. I want some pine nuts for the salad. So these are pine nuts, here's how they come. I've got a little pan. 
The pan's hot, the Evo's hot. I'll flip these a bunch. I want to get them toasty golden brown. And here's the other thing I want. Remember I promised grilled croutons. Well, here's how we're starting. I have a sourdough baguette. I'm just gonna rip. And I prefer a au naturel looking crouton like this. So I'm just gonna take a few pieces. I don't need too many and just rip them into crouton-esque size. They're gonna be great. If I was doing them in the oven, I would do it the same way. I like them ripped, not cut. But before we go any further, let's turn our steak. That's what we've done. We're going to a side. Let's give it a minute or so and we'll turn it again. We're flipping our pine nuts. We're also gonna put on this little pot that has butter in it that we'll be tossing the croutons in before they go on the grill. And because we're gonna want garlic in here, let's just give it a little squeeze. I'm telling you, I'm becoming a huge fan of the squeezed garlic and the squeezed ginger. And I used squeezed lemongrass the other day. Time to turn our steak again. Beautiful. Just keep it going like that. In the meantime, we're gonna take our grill pan that you've seen me use before, put it right there on the heat, let it start getting hot. Super useful. We did vegetables in this, in that video that we did 15 grilling items in. It was fantastic. Don't ignore the pine nuts. You can take a look. See, they're starting to get a little color. That's what you want, but you want it even, right? So keep going. And we're turning again, because we look like that. Great. So just trust that I'm gonna keep turning every minute and a half or so until this is ready. But right now, let's get our croutons happening. Here's our garlic butter. I'm gonna put a little bit in here. Now this, we will mix. These guys just get tossed. You get a little bit of salt, and they're going into our grill pan over here. This should be obvious. I just want them getting crispy. Yes, you could do it in an oven, but when you got a grill going and you're already here, it's way more fun, so why not? And you can turn your steak again. Great. Cook well, my little friend, cook well. The smell from these, here's a good reason to do this outside, man. They smell amazing. Give the benefit of the smell to your own nose, not the inside of an oven. And we just want them till they're crispy. And it's gonna be a couple minutes, but. Okay, these guys, ready? We'll just take them off and out of the pan because they'll continue cooking in the pan and I like where they are. And then uh, let's get back to the steak and the croutons. Hey, it's crouton time. I let some of them go a little longer than I should have, but they're gonna be fantastic. Let them cool. And our steak coming along very nicely. Feels still rare to me, but I use an instant read thermometer. I'm not guessing that, oh, that's this part of my hand. It's rare, it's this, it's that. I don't like to mess around. Let's find out actually, shall we? So if we take our digital instant read and we wanna go about that far into the middle, I'm looking at, oh, 120. Wait, there we go, 121. Beautiful. We're gonna go to uh, about 128 and pull it off. Sound good, Max? Yeah. Chance? Yep. Of course, you're agreeing with Max. Why wouldn't you? We're both agreeing with you. Oh, idiots. All right, and this kid is beautiful and ready. Bring him off, we'll let him rest. We'll make our salad. Salad first, and this is everything I'm using. We've got baby arugula, Napa cabbage, also known as Chinese cabbage. I love it for the crunch. Romaine, because I think every salad should have romaine. Curly parsley, you know I use it on top of things all the time, but in a salad, it's fantastic. Avocado, of course. Some shallot for a little oniony bite. Some baby pearl drop tomatoes. Pearl, what pearl baby? What'd you call the tomatoes? Teardrop. Teardrop. I swear you said something weird. I didn't. You didn't say teardrop. What did I say? Play it back. Pearl drop. Pearl drop. Did I say yeah, pearl you drop? Said pearl drop. Teardrop baby tomatoes. I think I said pearl, then teardrop. I self corrected. Pearl drop tomatoes. Some radishes and some of my beloved Holland peppers. And that's it. Gonna be honest, it's uh, maybe one of the prettiest salads I've ever made. But wait, don't stop there because now we make our caramelized onion vinaigrette. And our dressing begins. The mason jar and a half a cup of olive oil. Everything else goes in and we add a couple teaspoons of honey. Nice. Nice splash of Worcestershire. Teaspoons would be good for a little tang. Also for some tang, red wine vinegar, about a quarter of a cup. A little Dijon mustard, a little garlic paste, salt and pepper. We're using our BFF. And the star of our show, look at that. It's about a third of a cup of beautifully caramelized onions. Damn. And as we learned with the in and out episode, when you're caramelizing onions, take your time. Don't rush. Here's the fun part. We're gonna use a hand mixer, also known as a immersion blender, and hope that this shit doesn't go all over me. So down we go. I'll put my hand here just to be safe, and we'll begin. Come up slowly. We're emulsifying, ladies and gentlemen. And that, as they say, is all she wrote. 
Look at this. Look at this. Come on, let's have a taste. I was just notified I had something on my forehead. You notice I'm not looking at a mirror. I'm looking at a camera and two idiots that apparently chose not to tell me that I had anything on my I was head. I waiting until you were going to go say something to the camera. Max just said, oh, no, it's been there a while. I think we haven't had an on-camera shot since then. Uh, better why. not. And I don't mean idiots. I mean fine young men that hate me. That, on a scale of 1 to 10, is about a 17. If you love onions, if you love caramelized onions, this is for you. This has got you written all over it. Should we cut the steak? Let's go. And we're sufficiently rested. Tiny bit of warmth left. Just a tiny bit. Well, let's see how we've done here. Remember I said the grain is running this way, all the way. So I'm going to cut it in thirds and then into smaller pieces. How do we do? Remember, I believe in the turn, turn, turn method. And that's how we did. I don't think you can ask for a prettier cook, right? Look at that. But here's the real test, guys. The real test is this. Oh, and look at the way it cuts. Cuts like butter. So before we do anything, and put these on here with the point facing away. Boys, we all have to have a bite. Do you see the, the little ribbons of fat in there? That's what this is all about. Bite time. Salt, pepper, granulated garlic. That was it. Gonna be honest, one of the best bites of steak I've had. Holy fuck! Like, period. <laughs> Max, you can't swear on camera like that. Chancellor? Insane. Wow. Denver steak, where have you been all my life? <laughs> Wagyu Denver steak, where have you been all my life? Where has it been in my whole life? It hasn't been in my whole life. Technically, it was born in 2008. I mean, they've always existed. Cows have always had this cut, but it wasn't until then. And I don't know, it should have been named after the guy that found it. That's what it should have been. Holy sh it shay. All right, let's cut these into beautiful little thin pieces. Make the rest of the salad, get it together, and, and then just eat the F out of it. Thank you, Kevin. Oh, see what happens? The oxidizing. So you can see oxidization does that. It gets redder as it sits. Oh my God, this steak. Look at this fat in here. This is the wagyu-ness of the whole thing. This extra marbling. All right, we've got our steak cut. We've got our salad built. Let's throw it together, shall we? And here we go. Croutons, pine nuts, dressing. Oh boy. Yes, I'm not forgetting the steak. I'm not forgetting the steak, I promise. You don't want to overdress. Speaking of overdressing, boys, if you had to choose one to be the rest of your life, underdressed or overdressed, what would you be? That's overdressed. I don't know. I'd rather that than a dry salad. No, 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 I'm talking about clothing. Sorry, if you had to choose one to be the rest of your life, overdressed or underdressed? Overdressed. Chance? Overdressed. I'd rather be under. Okay, so some, some steak goes in now. Shit ass, man. Wait, one more thing. Some gorgeous fresh Parmesan on top. And two, and last, some fresh ground pepper. And I don't know about you, but damn. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What have we done here? Oh, I know what we've done. I'm proud of what we've done. I need a little crouton on here, too. There we go. That is for me. Bon appetit. There's so much going on here. The dressing, of course. That garlicky grilled crouton. Pine nuts. The, the, the Denver steak. Really, this Denver steak salad is maybe the best salad I think I've ever made. And I'm not saying that for a title, because it won't be the title, because Max is name it something else. I'm saying it is maybe the best salad I've ever made. Take the steak out and replace it with a dry-aged ribeye, be fantastic. Won't be a Denver steak, though, I gotta tell you. I think I have a new favorite steak. Kevin says this is his favorite steak now, right now. But a meat guy, I mean, imagine what they, they have access to. They're trying shit all the time. Go find yourself a butcher, Go find yourself a Denver steak and get cooking. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We got some fun stuff coming up that you will get to take advantage of if you are a uh, subscriber. Right, boys? Right!